mich hier. The Grey Goose, Adventures of a Modern Robin Hood. Somehow I grew sentimental over a shoplifter. Astounding, you think? <laughs> well, maybe. But by devious means, I found out that he, she was the widow of a corporal of mine who was killed at Dieppe. Now she was the victim of blackmail by a mean little rat, a shop walker in a big store, Ernie Williams. She had every chance of rehabilitation with someone she called Jeff, and that is where the dirty hand of blackmail entered the picture. Running Ernie Williams to earth, I suddenly found myself in a rather tight spot. That lorry comes to carry away these nylons, my friend, and in one moment you won't be cock of the walk. We'll be two to one. Don't be a fool. What do you think's happened to my lady friend who was here a moment ago? What? Yes, my friend, you may well ask. She's just slipped out. She's now, I think, ringing up a friend of mine at Scotland Yard, telling him where hundreds of stolen nylons may be found. Here, to be precise. You... Naughty, naughty, don't say it. You'll burst a blood vessel. Look, Williams, you're in a spot. You and your lorry driver friend can hold me. But what good will it do you? The police will be here any moment from now. Call off your lorry driver and talk turkey with me. Call him off, you fool. Now, quick. Not quite ready yet, Jerry. Hold it a few minutes, will you? I've got a visitor. Well, make it snappy. I don't like waiting around here with the band. You never know when some nosy cop will come butting in. All right, I won't be a minute. Now you just talk. Explain yourself and remember I've only got to yell once and Jerry will come bouncing in. And then we'll be two to one. But you won't yell for your pal, Jerry. No? Definitely no. Have you forgotten my companion managed to slip out? Didn't I tell you that only five minutes ago she had instructions to ring Scotland Yard and give them this address? Go ahead. Jump me, you and Jerry. What good's that going to do you? Then shut up. How much time do you think you have to pack all this stuff in that lorry? Only a few minutes. Can't be done. Good. Glad you can show a bit of intelligence. But cut me in, and the three of us can do it. Double quick time. But your Scotland Yard message... Ah, all hooey. Come on, my friend. Yes or no? Quick now. And look at this. A gun? Yes, a gun. Just a very little one. It's the palm of my hand, but it really does blow holes. Now, tell Jerry I'm in with you, and we'll get packing. That's the lot. Somehow I don't believe you, William. I tell you You're it's the lot. You're a liar. Lot. Show me the back room. Quick. Hurry up. Coming. Coming. Now the back room, partner. All right. This way. Nothing here. See? That big cupboard, what about it? Empty. Unlock it. I tell you there's nothing in it. I said open it. All right. A heavy spring lock for an empty cupboard. I sometimes keep a stock there. Open it. There you are. What did I tell you? Oh. By Jove, little Ernest, you did tell the truth. And how very convenient. Sleep, my little one, sleep. The cupboard will keep the light out of your eyes. Now then. In you go. And now for friend Jerry. Huh. That's going to be a little more difficult. How much longer? That you, Jerry? Afraid Ernie is not so good. Uh, fine time to be sick, I must say. We could load him onto the wagon. Come back here and give me a hand. Right. What's the matter with the dope? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's suffering with the same complaint that you have. Must be something catching, I think. Now, Jerry, the cupboard for you, too. My lord, you're heavy. <clears throat> I'm glad I got my haymaker in first. Right. Well, just the present of a grey goose feather in the keyhole, I think. Now for the lorry. Good. <laughs> he left the ignition key in. Thanks, Jerry. Mm -hmm. 
that you, Inspector? Yes, for the... Great heavens, you again. Now, don't say it like that. I haven't bothered you for quite a time, have I? Oh, yes, you have. Far too long. Well, what do you want me for this time? I wish to make a donation to the police force. Oh, you do? I suppose somebody's been robbed by the Grey Goose. How did you guess? I... Really, Inspector Ford, Sherlock Holmes and Dick Tracy are the mere dust beneath your chariot wheels. Now, look, will you cut out the funny stuff and say what you've got to say? Right. You must excuse my little indulgence in some harmless fun. Well, now, did you receive a, uh, a message from a lady earlier this evening? Yes, I did. It was to the effect that I'd hear from the Grey Goose if I stayed in my room. Well, I've stayed. Now get on with it. Very well. I believe that from your window you can see the main gate. Yes, I can. How do you know? Why, well, I've been in your room. <laughs> but that won't help. You have so many callers, don't you? Well, what about the view from my window? Oh, yes. Well, standing by the gate on the embankment is a lorry. Uh, have a look. All right, I can see it. Shouldn't be there, I suppose, but I'm not a parking policeman. Well, uh, that's my gift to the police. Ask the constable on duty to open one of the parcels in that lorry. But, uh, There's no driver. Uh, that is, I abandoned it ten minutes ago. Now, just buzz that constable. You, you'll never regret it. Now, I'll wait. Oh, all right, all right. Hold on. There's an abandoned lorry at the gate. I wish to know the contents. Yes. Yes, open the parcel and let me know what it contains. Yes, at once. Buzz me back immediately. Thank you, Inspector. You're going to enjoy this, I assure you. <laughs> a pity you haven't got a girlfriend. What's that got to do with the lorry? All right, hold it. At you gate? Good. You have? What's that? A lorry full of nylons? I'm jiggered. All right, bring it inside the gate and put a duty man in charge. I'll be down later. What did you say? A feather stuck in the ignition key? Well, I... Be well, Inspector. Ah. Yeah, you've certainly made us a present. Confound your feathers on you, too. I suppose you didn't steal them. What? Uh, rob the ladies? Hmm, not I. But I do know those who did. Friends of yours. Should you ask them, I think the answer will be a very definite negative. I can, however, introduce you to them. When? Immediately. Just take a couple of your men along to 11 Byron Grove, uh, just off Clapham Common. Well? They'll be waiting for you. Crooks don't wait for the police to call. These crooks will. They're slightly different. You'll find them in a big cupboard in the back room. Oh, uh, I, I left the front door open for you. Uh, by the way, those nylons might do some of your police boys a bit of good. <laughs> You can be sure the original owners won't be able to claim them. Good night. Wait, wait. The... Ah, and found him. He's hung up. Well, acting on information received, I'd better go and look up our friends in Byron Grove. The fact is, Barbara, I'm a bit worried about this nylon business. But Why? The police have the nylons. They've also got Ernie Williams and the man Jerry. Everything's more or less concluded. More or less? Very indefinite. You see, Barbara, Ernie Williams will squeal when it comes to his trial. What can he squeal about? His accomplice. Accomplice? Yes. Coerced as she was, Nancy Wells is completely involved. Actually, she's the thief. He's the receiver of stolen goods. Strictly speaking, he's the accomplice. If Ernie squeals, and I'm certain he will... She'll have it coming to her. Then you've done no good. Well, I've removed the menace of Ernie Williams. You get a few years and he can't threaten her or blackmail her while he's in prison. So far, so good. Oh, by the way, she's coming round tonight. Is that safe for you? Oh, yes. I'm positive she can't betray me, or rather, wouldn't. But I'm a little perturbed about Ben Ford rather than Nancy. Why? He knows I was interested in a shoplifter. If this rat Ernie Williams does squeal, Ben might put a few uh, nylons together. Add them up, plus Nancy, plus me, equals the Grey Goose. It's on the cards. Ben's no dope. Someone coming down the passage. No need to worry. It's Nancy, I think. 
I told you she was coming round here. I'll go. Sit tight. Uh, put your mask on and ditto me. Oh, come in, Nancy. Uh, thank you. You two ladies I've met before? Yes. And believe me, there's no need to wear those masks. <laughs> I really didn't think there was. All right, Barbara. Unveil. Believe me, I'll never betray you, whatever happens. Thank you, my dear. With the certain conviction of Ernie Williams... Which is certain. Yes. With him in jail or out of jail, I'm safe. I acted on your advice. I told Jeff everything. Good girl. Much the best way. But there is still a possibility I may be arrested. Ernie will see to that. We were just discussing that. Jeffrey has said that even if I do become involved, as far even as prison, he'll not alter. He'll... he'll wait for me. We must fix it so that he doesn't have to. Well, how can that be done? Nancy, have you recently been on the continent? Oh, not for three years. Why? You still have a passport then? Of course. Then that's the solution. Four days before Ernie and co. come up for trial, just time to get a visa for France. Oh, what's wrong with you and your Geoffrey taking a honeymoon? Oh, it could be arranged. Then that's it. Get away before the trial. Missing witness and all that. Someone in the passage. Nancy, sit quiet. Stay put. Coming! Why, Inspector Ford? The police! Shh. Stay put, as he said. On my way home. Got a drink? I've had a whale of a day. Inspector, let me present Mrs. Wells. Oh, you must have heard of her. Must I? I, I beg your pardon, Mrs. Wells, but my ignorance of famous people is prodigious. Mrs. Wells is not exactly famous, but she very nearly was. However, she's giving up and going abroad immediately. Yes. And what line did you pursue, Mrs. Wells, if I may ask? Uh, huh. uh, don't be bashful, Mrs. Wells. Uh, the adornment inspector of the female form. Oh, yes? Oh, oh I get it. Corsets, eh? <laughs> <laughs> In sentimental mood, Roland Fletcher has faced almost certain exposure, but evaded it in the long run. What further adventure lies in wait for the Grey Goose? <laughs>